Catch that, yes, and put it on the edge, and they got two. Henry's pumped, a lot of couple of days of cricket, he's enjoying. Bowling, knocked him over, how has he missed that? An outstanding bowling performance, and you have to say, one of the most dominant commanding displays. Uh, yeah, it has been a bit surreal. You don't really think about it too much, and um, I suppose over the last couple of days, it does soak in a little bit more. Um, just how special it was to have my, uh, family and my friends and um, have them there as well, which was really, really special. So, um, yeah, I think it will take a bit of time, but, yeah. for 23, best test figures against South Africa. Anytime your name is mentioned, and it has been mentioned a lot alongside Sir Richards, that must mean you've done something pretty special. Uh, yeah, I, I think it was a real pinch yourself moment. Um, I suppose when you come off I, at the time, it wasn't really, um, didn't really recognise, I suppose, the, the gravity of taking that seventh wicket and and what it, I suppose it means and to, to be a part of such rich history and, and Sir Richard to be here as well and, yeah. and send me a, a kind message afterwards as well. It, it, yeah, it did mean a lot and I think it's, yeah, like I said, it's, it's, it's the same thing. You probably, probably really, really sink it in probably later on down the track. Names up there. I'm guessing there was probably your name with tape at the end of the test match. Yeah. How cool was that? Yeah, it's pretty special. Um, being here at home at Hagley, it, you kind of walk past that board and, and you do see the names up there and, and you see the history of New Zealand cricket and Hagley Oval and now to be a part of that and have your name up there and, and the fact that my mum and dad can come down and my wife and my brother and, and, and come and be a part of it too and yeah, no, it, it is a special moment which I'll look back fondly on. I mean, that's a support network that you've had right from the start growing up. They've been there to take you to games, to support you and, and so for them to be able to share in your success, that's huge, isn't it? Yeah, massively. Um, I think it's, it's pretty cool when you think back, they're the ones doing the scorebooks, washing the clothes, doing the drop-offs, um, and they sacrifice a lot for, uh, I suppose, uh, us kids to just go out there and enjoy cricket, and me and my brother are both cricket mad and rugby mad, so they would have been pretty pretty busy while growing up, and. I think that's probably when you when you look at that, like you said, it's all those times in the backyard, you're pretending to be out here in a test match, and I mean, it's probably why I'm a bowler, because I couldn't get my brother out, so it always turned into a test match, because the one day it didn't work out well for me, so um, yeah, so it's cool that you can kind of enjoy that, those moments with them, because they've probably been through so much with you too. A little birdie told me before that first test that uh, you got some new stickers on your bats, um, some retro bubble stickers that you were pretty happy about. Yep. Um, yeah, I was absolutely stoked. Uh, when the bubble came out, it was one of my favourite bats when I was a kid, um, <laughs> taking me back to the days of playing in the park with my brother and stuff, and the bubble got a lot of use. Yeah. It was definitely one of my favourites, so it was a bit of a surprise for Holly. Um, as I was, uh, yeah, I spent a couple of hours in the garage sanding back my bat so I could put my stickers back on there. And then, shadow betting? Yeah, far too much shadow betting for a, a, a lower order batsman. Um, yeah, she's probably worried for a bit because I wouldn't put the thing down and I was just playing with it in the lounge. And When you grow up playing cricket, it's so much fun and I think you'll know that when you get those bats when you're a kid, it's the Christmas, it's so exciting. and. That's the probably cool thing is still nothing changes. Eh? Even though I'm a bowler, um, you, you still get excited when you get that new kit, the smell of the fresh pads and the new bat in hand. So, um, yeah, I think Holly was worried for a bit, but <laughs> thankfully uh, it probably explained itself a little bit. You've been married just over a year, so we could still say newlyweds, you and Holly. It's 21 years old um, when Holly and I met, and I've been so lucky, I think. She's uh, always been such a massive support for me. Um, and. I think we got married, yeah, it was a year ago, just over a year ago now, and it was an amazing day, and, and I think she's always been here for me, uh, which is cool, and I know people talk about that rock and that foundation at home, but she really has been, she's 
supported me through the thick and the thin. Um, and I think the ability for her to navigate that with me, uh, being unsure where we're going with tours and always being that last selection, so not really understanding where we're going to be or yeah. how we're going to get there has is, is been fun. Um, and I think that's credit to her. She's taken it in her stride and we've been able to create so many amazing memories through cricket as well. Um, we've, we've travelled the world together. She's come on the county uh, circuit with me too. and. Um, we've got so many friends around the world now through that too um, and, and very successful in our own right and our own career as well. One of the things that everyone loves about your henners is that um, you're the ultimate team man and you go beyond and above to help others in the team. Um, you're very genuine, you're just an all-round nice guy so I think that was summed up in how much um, happiness and support there was for you after that performance because everyone just wanted to see you do well. I suppose I've been in a unique situation um, for New Zealand for quite a long time now and we have a lot of strength um, in our bowling department and we always have so probably understanding um, what I can offer the team even if it's off the field has, has been important to me and I think you see a lot of people come and go and, and how that affects the team when people get into frustrations and, and I think that's something I always pride myself on was trying not to get in that headspace because you're not really helping anyone else um, as well as you're not really doing yourself a service actually getting better so it hasn't been easy um, and it has something that I've um, you do have to, to work hard on that um, and, and just keep trying to get better and, and grow your game and I suppose that's why the county cricket's been so big for me as well being able to go over and play more cricket when I've sat on the sides and not probably played as much get that time under the belt and, and put those lessons into practice as well Oh, is he nicked that? Is it a bottom edge? Yes. That's twice now England batsmen have got themselves in the 90s and they've gone. How disappointing for Joe Root. I want to go back to your test debut, which was seven years ago. You've only played the 15 tests over that seven year period, which is not a lot. So, as you mentioned, it must be difficult being on the fringe, but I guess it shows how the depth of New Zealand cricket at the moment. Yeah, uh, looking back pretty fondly on those memories as well, that was a, a debut at Lords. Yeah, it doesn't, um, get, any better it doesn't get much better than that. And I, I think every time things do get tough, you look back on those moments and you're having a couple of World Cup finals in there. You've had um, the yeah, Test Championship as well and then the, the Lords debut. There's so many positives to take out and not probably get too caught up in the, the negatives. And, and I think... Looking at that debut, it was a lot of fun, and it was once again my family could be there, which was cool. And um, has been your first Test wicket, uh, Alistair Cook actually, Sir Alistair Cook. Um, <laughs> Caught Watling bowled Henry. Uh, yeah, it was. That was an edge. Yeah, the finger's gone up, and Cook is not hanging around. And it was a sharp bouncer that did it. It was uh, caught behind. I remember he said, oh, I want to bowl a bouncer. And he said, I'll make sure it's a goodie because he's obviously caught on the short ball and it was actually a little bit down leg, but kind of got the, oh, got the leg glove through there. But it was, that was definitely a dream to remember. I, I, the, the feeling of a test debut at Lords. Um, and we, it was a really good game of cricket as well. It, the ebbs and flows was huge. We, we were on top and then all of a sudden they came back into it and then we were back on top and then remember they, we were under the pump a bit with the bat and then all of a sudden it looked like we could draw this yeah. game. And... Um, but I always vividly remember the next game at Headingley, we came back and we managed to win that game to tie the series, which was the first Test win. And, and that feeling of, I suppose, what a Test win means to this, this group. And uh, it's definitely something you don't take for granted. That is an absolute ripper from Matt Henry. It seemed to move late. It's pegged back bells off stump and England are four down. Yeah, there's so many moments and different moments. Like World Cups are always special. Um, debuts are also special in their own right as well. I think probably giving time, this would, this this series would probably be right up there as well. So, um, I, I do think probably a, a real highlight would probably be my, I think my Test debut. That was the amount of times you pretend you're a black cap or you're making your debut or you're running and playing at Lords. Um, even though it didn't always work out well for me against my brother, I think um, <laughs> it always ended in tears. But I think when you actually, it is a bit of a pinch yourself moment. I remember some of the guys are saying, actually, it will go fast. So just take a moment and actually look around and take it in, which is some real cool advice because you're standing there at fine leg, you actually just look around, there's this buzz, this crowd, you're representing your country for the first time at the home of cricket. It's, 
it was cool. And, and, and looking back on that, and I think it does take a long time to actually sit there and look at those things as well. So I'm sure um, this game here and uh, last week will, will be up there too, I think. The cricket's given me so much. Yeah. Um, it's allowed me to travel the world, meet some wonderful people, um, and have some incredible memories, not just for me, but my family, my friends. and. It's a fantastic game with so much history. Um, and I think the, the, the older I've got and, and the more cricket I've played, the more you probably look into that history and, and what that looks like. And this is a special group we've got right here. And to be a Black Cap 266, yeah, for me it's fun. I love it. I've enjoyed my cricket. And, and it's just trying to keep remembering that when times are tough that we're pretty lucky with what we're doing. And, and I think that's what's probably got to me where I am now. He strikes me as uh, a very nice but also very level-headed person, uh, Matt Henry. And, and Stephen, when you've got a, a guy in the squad, let's say, or in, and in the team who, you know, it doesn't always get the reward when it comes. It's not prolific with the wickets, but always does a job, you know, and he hasn't been, but he never gets whacked. He never bowls badly. A good guy to have around uh, the team as well if he's not playing, doesn't seem to, you know, drop the bottom lip. How valuable are they? Well, they're incredibly valuable. When you see the impact he's had on this test series so far, I think some of the the mannerisms or his characteristics that he shows are really important for the success of the side you don't want someone who's happy to be dropped or not playing and it hurts him deep you know you hear that coming through he wants to play every game there's no doubt about it but when it doesn't go his way he's not down he doesn't drag other people down he, he i think there's some reflection and then away he goes again now whether that's because it's happened a number of times but to have someone just on the fringe who can come in and flick into high performance um, sort of systems and, and be ready to go is the strength of the group and, and that's right and that's why I think everyone was so rapt to see him do well in that test match and the last couple of test matches he's played he's just done a great job. Yeah you, you look at his record going into before the first test here it wasn't great reading um, you know you could argue that New Zealand might have been looking for other players to, to come in and fill that gap. He gets seven wickets in the first innings, he, he backs it up, he becomes man of the match, he even gets 60 with the bat actually. Yeah. Um, and then I, I, everyone's going, OK, well, is that, a, is that a flick the switch moment for him? And he hasn't been tremendously rewarded with wickets in, in this match, but I think he's looked more threatening than he has before that 7 foot. Do you, so do you think that he, he has moved forward and that, that great result he had in the first test has improved him as a cricket? Well, the thing you've got, to, you, you've got to accept is that when Matt has played, he's been under pressure because he only gets one game here with it. He doesn't know how long someone's going to be injured for. So he is trying to do absolutely everything he can to do well in that test and push his uh, claim going forward. But it's very hard if you don't have the, the cohesion with the side, you don't feel comfortable that your spot is secure, you can't relax into your performance. Now, you're at your very best. You're not thinking about selection. You are comfortable with, with who you are and what you're doing, and it just rolls on. That hasn't been the case for Henry. He's often just had, to, well, I've got five days here to make the most of it. And so sometimes pushing too hard and trying to get, uh, get more out of yourself to make a point can be detrimental to going forward. And that's why I think the last performance in the Test Series, he felt really comfortable and the rhythm was there and the ball was coming out of the hand. At times, he has been a little bit inconsistent um, in the areas that he wants to be. But you're right, last test in this one, that in particular today, he looks very comfortable with where he's at and very comfortable with the role he's playing. And he's, I think he's definitely taking steps forward. Brilliant first-class cricketer. Uh, devastating in England as well in county cricket. Why do you think he's had such success there and it's taken him a long time, uh, and it has taken a long time uh, for that to transfer over to Test cricket? Because he's comfortable there. He has his space. He's, a, he's actually one of the big dogs in that. He's an overseas player and he, he thrives on that, but he knows game after game he's playing. And that's the impact it can have when you're comfortable with where you are and what you're doing and the role you have to play. You can be dependent upon when you're going in and out. You don't know whether you're playing or whether you're not. It's just unsettling. So when you've got to deal with the disappointment of not getting in or the excitement of getting in, then you've got to settle into your job. And that can be really disruptive to a uh, to a rhythm bowler or a batter or anyone who wants to play or anyone at work. If you're in and out of work all the time, it's really disruptive. All right, just a real quick thought on uh, 298 for seven is where South Africa have. Where do you see the next?
next two sessions of the day go? Well, the last session is definitely New Zealand has stunted South Africa. It's really put them in a bind. They can bat time here, but they will chew up their opportunity to win later in the test. So they've got to keep pushing forward. New Zealand will be looking to get a couple more wickets, maybe bowl them out this session, then go about getting a big score themselves. So it's still really evenly poised. Uh, South Africa have to be aggressive and that will present New Zealand opportunities. Yeah, I'm looking at this actually. I'm starting to cast my mind forward to late yeah. on day five. Uh, New Zealand trying to set history. Even if they draw parities, there's a chance here. South Africa, if the teams are very even, could set them a bit of a run chase. So I think we're in for a really, really interesting test match.